Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, us at uh, one of Springfield's oldest neighborhoods. Uh, it turned out to be a nice sunny day. And the, what brings us here is the Enos Park TIF and restoration in Springfield and where we want to go as a community, as one community, uh, you know, really developing the heart of Springfield. And you can't point to a better model than Enos Park and what the neighbors have done through the years. And the reason we appreciate the news media being here, um, Michelle Ownby, the president of Enos Park Development, Alderman Proctor, who's been a champion for this area and the importance of the TIF, and then Lakeisha Purchase, uh, being a resident here, but also serving on Capital Township Board. And we appreciate her efforts for trying to get the uh, letter of support. Uh, you know, as we speak, I believe uh, the legislature is uh, looking at TIF legislation. I had conversations with our legislative leaders locally and asked that uh, they consider Enos Park TIF. And at that time it was Madison Park Place, I was going to lump them together. Uh, but they said we need to get all the taxing bodies letters, but the big holdout is Capital Township. And we did have a meeting with, uh, you know, I had one on Sunday with Sangamon County Treasurer Joe Alio, who is also the superintendent of the uh, Enos Park neighbor, or the, I'm sorry, the Capital Township, uh, and went through his concerns and then also had a meeting or attended the meeting with the Capital Township Board. And unfortunately, they did not take the appropriate action, even though uh, Lakeisha Purchase had made the motion to uh, provide a letter of support. It, she could not get a second. And this is after much uh, debate and deliberation, uh, trying to explain where we're going, where we're trying to do in revitalizing this important area. All you have to do is drive around the area. You see the vacated properties. You see the great housing structures have been rehabbed. Most recently, uh, you see the YMCA that's uh, been constructed, a $35 million project during a pandemic. And that's largely due to the TIF support but also Memorial Health Center support and private donor support. But to give a little history, and this is what really um, why I thought it'd be important to call this uh, news conference, it's pretty clear that even though information's out there, as elected officials, unfortunately, not all of them are as informed as they should be. And so I thought it'd be important to share the good, great works that we've done, but the important work that we still have left to do. And as a lifelong resident of Springfield, I've watched the positive transformation of Venus Park. That's taken over the past three decades. It is because of the hard work, dedication, and compassion of the residents who call Enos Park their neighborhood and home. It is because of these efforts that this area is returning as the jewel of Springfield. Some of you may not realize, but Enos Park is the oldest neighborhood in Springfield. Due to its proximity to downtown, many of the merchants and politicians began to settle here in Enos Park in the early days of Springfield. The Edwards home, known as Edwards Place, is where Mary Lincoln's brother-in-law lived and where the future president, Abraham Lincoln, would court his future wife, Mary. Enos Park also has the unsavory past of where two alleged incidents occurred that sparked the Springfield's 1908 race riots. Unfortunately, as time went on, people began to move out of Venus Park to other areas of the city and to newer developments. This gem had lost its gleam. But Springfield's story does not exist without Enos Park. The residents who live here have worked tirelessly to restore this neighborhood to the historic charm it was once known for. Some have even called them urban pioneers of Springfield, like Marilyn Pylon, She's the matriarch of Venus Park. I remember Marilyn when I was in my banking days back in the 90s. And we worked on housing fairs together, educational seminars. And she really carried the banter with regards to Enos Park, not only as an association, but that vision for development. Steve Combs, who was president of the association, he was a vocal advocate for the consolidation of the rail project. As Ed Curtis had deemed it, the most important project to Springfield is moving the rail from the 3rd Street Corridor to the 10th Street Corridor. 
because it not only helps the medical district, but it helps Enos Park and improves the uh, people's lives within the area. And most recently, carrying on that legacy is Michelle Owenby. She's the president of the Enos Park Development, and she's done a fabulous job with regards to demolishing dilapidated, dangerous structures. She's done development in the area, as well as partnered with the healthcare community to assess people's health within the neighborhood and provide a, a, a barometer for future uh, initiatives associated with the health care. So at this time, I'd like Michelle Ombi to come forward and make a few remarks of why it's important that the Enos Park TIF be renewed. Michelle? As the mayor mentioned, we've been at this for a long time now. The Neighborhood Association itself was formed in 1989, and in 2010, we put a master plan in place that was intended to be a long-range vision for the neighborhood. We are still very much working on some of those goals. Some of them have been accomplished. Others are works in progress. But the TIF is a very critical element of continuing to make progress. Enos Park Development is the land banking arm of the Neighborhood Association, and it owns about 75 vacant lots, including the one that you're standing on here. The goal is to have both commercial and residential redevelopment to attract infill new construction. I don't have to tell you that it's hard to do in older urban areas, particularly in Springfield. And without the TIF as an incentive for future development, it makes it nearly impossible. The other issue is that we have some very popular programs in place to help homeowners repair these big old houses. The houses on either side of you here were recently renovated um, and are now home to new families because of the TIF program, because of the 50-50 matching program that was put into place by the city that makes it feasible for people to tackle these big projects. We also have a program in place through the TIF that provides down payment assistance to first responders and veterans. And we have several that have moved into the neighborhood in the last few years um, and taken advantage of those incentives. So if the TIF is to go away, then those programs go away as well. And again, adds another layer of challenge to being able to attract new homeowners, being able to renovate our existing housing stock and having an incentive to offer to developers that might be interested in future construction, especially now with the, uh, the Y as a wonderful amenity in the neighborhood. So with that, I will yep. turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you, Michelle. And one thing uh, Michelle had uh, harped on, as well as Alderman Proctor, you know, they, uh, they have their, uh, you know, their hearts in Enos Park. Uh, they represent this area well. And one thing they had said with the TIF legislation, Mayor, don't bring Madison Park Place and expand it to Pillsbury. And, uh, you know, when I talked to Senator Marnar especially, uh, you know, he wasn't necessarily in favor. So I did listen. And I said uh, during the conference call that we had with the uh, uh, Joe Alio at the time, uh, I said, you know, Alderman Proctor, I'm not going to bring forward the Madison Park Place Pillsbury because it's important. Uh, we still have time for that one, but we really need action on Enos Park moving forward. So uh, one thing uh, Michelle had mentioned is with regards to the new housing program. One thing in 2015 when I was walking these blocks and uh, Alderman Proctor was walking these blocks, uh, we heard the same thing as the neighbors would say, you know, we don't have uh, we don't know where the money goes you know they knew they had a tiff they could see the ornamental lighting uh, they could see some houses popping up but they didn't know how to access the funds and move forward in that direction well thanks to alderman proctor and championing it we uh, developed the uh, exterior rehabilitation program and made that program possible looked at our processes how do we transition to how we were what worked well we kept what didn't work well we moved past and uh, took corrective action and we really appreciate his efforts in that and today I think there's um, one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars of private or private dollar or TIF dollars that were allocated two hundred forty five thousand dollars of private dollars uh, from the individual residents that made this project go I think there's probably 40 residents that have been benefited by this great program but I'd ask Alderman Proctor to come forward and share his insights of why he thinks it's important to extend the TIF and the importance of that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, actually, we did meet for the first time uh, in front of Quick and Easy on Fifth Street. He was walking one side of the street, and I was walking the other side of the street. And, uh, <laughs> that was the first time I met you. Um, but really quick, M Michelle hit upon a really good point. Uh, this neighborhood is a work in progress, and I want to hit upon that this TIF is working. The, the What you see in this neighborhood with this TIF is working. And there has been numerous families and numerous people that have benefited from their own property tax dollars that have gone into the TIF. And then when we got in an office, we democratized the TIF so that these individual homeowners can get access to that money to rehab their own homes. And so we expanded that to veterans, we expanded the first responders. Uh, my plan is to expand it to healthcare workers and teachers uh, because we got McLaren and we got the hospitals next to the next door in the neighborhood here. So I just want to hit up on this TIF is working and it needs to continue to work. And um, I appreciate Lakeisha Purchase with Capital Township making the motion yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a second, but uh, as you always say, there's another bite at the apple and I think we're going to get that and I hope we do. Um, but with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman. Appreciate it. Thank you. The, uh, we appreciate your words, Alderman. And uh, he had on something that uh, Senator Menard uh, had spoken about is the success of this TIF. I called Senator Menard after the uh, meeting yesterday with Capital Township. I mentioned uh, the leadership uh, action that Lakeisha Purchase took in making the motion, didn't get a second. And he was uh, pretty much surprised by that. He said, Enos Park TIF is one of the gems or the really a TIF you can point to for success. And that's throughout the state. He understands the importance of TIF. And so actually he, he actually recommended what you should do is make it known what happened. And so that's part of why we're here today is making sure people understand the situation, uh, understand the importance of moving forward with the support of the extension of the downtown TIF or the Enos Park TIF. But with that, uh, one person that understood not only the TIF, but the importance of Capital Township. Um, you know, as you know, Capital Township is coterminous with the city of Springfield. And, you know, I've been pretty vocal about my opinion about that. But who has really brought Capital Township up to the level of how government should act as Lakeisha Purchase? Because she made it more transparent, more accountable. She's actively out there. Uh, during the pandemic, she's been out there with food drives and other charitable activities and really if you want to point to a trustee that exemplifies what Capital Township uh, is supposed to be in service to that's Lakeisha Purchase so we appreciate her leadership on the board and really uh, pushing the importance of TIF, TIF the Enos Park TIF and having that letter of support so I'd ask her to come forward and say a few words if she would please. Thank you Mayor. So yesterday when we had our meeting, um, we had this conversation has been in works for two months now. Last month, Michelle had came and spoke to our board and gave a very layout in detail of how the TIF works, what we're doing in the area, and how we can move forward. With me being one of the first pioneers to come to the neighborhood and go through the program of rehabbing my home, I understood how it worked. And as, as for long as I've been here now, going into five years, I've noticed that um, there's a lot of incentives that we're doing here and it's turning over for the better good. And I think that although we've had some growth, we still have more to do and we won't be able to move forward without the, the TIF being continued and renewed. So I called a motion yesterday for it and I believe it was what mayor about a minute, Andrew about a minute and there was no response to it. And I did also last month and Joe Alio said, we just need to keep on looking at more details. I'm not for sure what other details he's looking for, but um, we have another, we recessed yesterday and we have another meeting on Thursday. So I'll be looking forward to call a motion again for us to show a letter of support for renewing the TIF. And I'm, I've been a proponent the whole time and will continue to be a proponent. And I thank the mayor for allowing me to come and speak today to show that we know what we need to do. And if Capital Township is saying that we're all in this together, we should move forward and pass the motion for a support and a letter for renewing the TIF. So thank you for having me out today. Thank you, appreciate it. The uh, one thing I'll add is it's all about neighborhoods. Uh, Enos Park is a neighborhood. When I uh, served on downtown Springfield's board, 
Uh, we did a housing study and we have consultants come in and one of the things they expressed is the connectivity between neighborhoods. And so they treated uh, downtown Springfield as a neighborhood in conjunction with Enos Park. Well, what proves that point is the YMCA project. And so, uh, unfortunately, Lisa Stott could not be here today, but you can call her afterwards if you so choose. But the importance of not only uh, uh, the YMCA project, that was in partnership with downtown TIF, as well as the Enos Park TIF to make that $35 million project come to fruition, the other one over there is the county market with regards to TIF dollars, made that happen. And then the other important aspect is the Springfield Art Association Visual Arts Center. And then you have the medical community with 8,000, nearly 8,000 employees. So you have these great amenities where an individual can work, they can work, live and play right in the area. So uh, that's what it's all about. How do you connect the resources to develop the areas around us? And so with Enos Park, it's a necessary extension that we're asking for. And with that, uh, as Lakeisha had mentioned, tomorrow they're having a Capital Township board meeting. So we hope that they fulfill our request with regards to uh, writing a letter of support and moving in that direction. Uh, we have a handout that we'll give you, uh, and it goes down the list, so I'll try to go from memory. Uh, one was with regards to, uh, you know, the accountability, transparency, and uh, I don't think they were aware that we put in a, you know, when I came into office, one of the things I put in place was the Community Economic Development Commission. And the reason for that is, as treasurer, I sat back as treasurer, and I saw that council members would have questions about TIP projects. So that's why I formed a commission. It's an independent board uh, with people that come from various backgrounds and uh, they vet the projects. And so that was one aspect. And then the other one is um, with regards to transparency, you know, we have annual meetings, we have ward plan meetings, discuss TIF and other projects that ha are happening. But with regards to the reports, those are all online, especially with the annual reports associated with the TIF. Uh, so that's uh, one area was uh, the transparency. The other aspect was with regards to accountability. Um, I know it was brought up with regards to the number of lots that Enos Park has in its possessions. And the reason for that is because of the dilapidated nature it was in. Before we uh, came into office, they were you know, purchasing properties, moving that direction. But it, it is very difficult to develop properties. And so we, uh, are working uh, on a strategy to improve the uh, land bank situation. Uh, and what it all comes down to is financial resources. So if you want to know what would happen if the TIF's not renewed, and I express this point, if you want to know what would happen, all you have to do is look at the Park South TIF. That's where um, you have the FBI Academy. You have the uh, blood bank out there. So once they dissolve that TIF, it's brand new developable development ready property there's not been a development out there since and so you have a association that has 70 pride properties and you need the financial resources to close the gap the financial gap to bring those uh, properties into development and it's just not Enos Park this happens we have uh, the Springfield project they have uh, dozens of properties you have uh, what I mentioned Enos Park then you have Sangamon County trustee we take care of the properties as public works through our public works. We count their, we cut their properties as well as the Springfield project. And then the city of Springfield, of course, has their own properties. So you have hundreds of properties around Springfield, and we're looking at how do we develop a strategy to uh, make that work. And actually, uh, we uh, are moving towards that initiative. Uh, actually, I filed a uh, request to Harvard Bloomberg, you know, my relationship with Harvard Bloomberg, that they would help us uh, hopefully by granting us a fellow that over the summer that would help develop a strategy associated with that type of development. A couple other things they mentioned, one was the payout. Uh, the city council is gonna consider a uh, payout today. I think it's on the agenda tonight. One is with the school district. So when we renewed the downtown TIF, we had a payout to the school district. Uh, that's been done previously. It's, uh, and the reason for that is so there is 
of the property taxes go to the school district. So what we did is, you know, pay about a portion of their increment, and so we did the same with Enos Park. The caveat that we had recently was with the park district. And so with the park district, what you have are limited financial resources. How do they develop parks? So they have how many parks? I'd ask Andrew to come forward, or Alderman Proctor, sorry, to come forward and talk to this. But they have uh, a couple of properties right here in Nina's Park that we would allocate their increment on the front end so they can do development within the parks in this area. And during a pandemic, everybody should realize the importance of outdoor spaces and the importance of that. Well, the city is working with the park district to have two governing bodies actually working together to get this done and help them out and improve their resources right here by using the TIF. But I'd ask Andrew to uh, speak to that component in itself. Uh, yeah, the, the parks are, you know, Enos Park, you know, so it's a very necessary component of this neighborhood. And you got uh, in, in the future when the, the rail consolidation occurs, you're going to have hopefully the Third Street Rail turn into a bike path. And so it's good that uh, the mayor was able to get this agreement with the park district and so that they would agree that that increment that they receive will go to fund projects within the, within the neighborhood that are recreational related. And so that can improve the, improve the two parks and also uh, when it comes time with the rail consolidation, we get a bike path that runs right in the middle of, of Venus Park that connects downtown uh, to Venus Park even further. So I think it's, you know, it's, 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 it shows good working cooperation between government bodies to focus on the residents that we represent. And it's not about, you know, it's not about what are you going to do for me here, what am I going to do for here, there, you're going to need this, you need that. It's not about that, it's about the individuals and the families and the residents that live here and what we can do as elected representatives to improve their lives. We tend not to like to step on each other's feet in their ward. You know, so this is, you know, every alderman uh, is supporting this effort that I know or that I've talked to. Um, they understand the importance of extending the uh, Enos Park TIF. Um, but I'll, I'll yep. turn to the mayor about that. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, with the, uh, I knew Capital Township uh, could be a, a challenge in getting the letter. So I did ask, uh, actually, Alderman Redpath to go and speak to uh, uh, Treasurer Alio at the time, and he did, and um, he didn't get uh, very far, I guess, or you'd have to ask Alderman Redpath well, about here, that. Right? What's that? He's not here. He's not here, but he is supportive of the TIF. He knows the importance of it. Just to clarify, so mm -hmm. you have the letter of support now from the Park District recommended agreement? Uh, not yet. Actually, we had a path forward to get it, and, uh, yeah. Uh, well, they... <laughs> Actually, uh, I've talked to the president, Leslie Scro, and so uh, what we were going to do is uh, take a, uh, you know, a, write a letter of uh, what our commitment would be uh, based on the ordinance coming forward with the city council and then ask that they, uh, you know, supply the letter. Now, the uh, president was hesitant to do that. You know, she, she wasn't sure, and she said, well, as Capital Township provided their letter. So it's a, almost which comes first. But with regards to the park district, I have my full faith that uh, we will get that, you know, uh, once we have this partnership uh, codified through city council and uh, move in that direction. Yeah, and so uh, we've done that with the uh, east, uh, east Side TIF. We, it was a similar situation and, uh, you know, where the dollars were allocated, the dollars here are allocated to the Y project. And so we just want to continue the good work that Enos Park has done and the uh, Neighborhood Association and move forward to help the residents and, uh, you know, lift Venus Park up to the gem that it once was.